So back on October 16th of 2021, I just went ahead and went for it and I revisited Carowinds. I had been there on a church trip before, but I didn't film anything there. So anyways, I was very excited to go back last year um, and it was an interesting day. So I hope you'll come along for the ride. They just put this disclaimer in here because it's taken me so long to finally get these edited that this was all the way back in October. So anyways. What's going on guys? At this point it's very early in the morning. It's like 6 a.m. right now. Um, but I'm about to leave because it's about a roughly four hour drive to get to Carowinds. That's right, I am going to Carowinds today. I've actually been to Carowinds once before, um, back in 2018. But of course that was before Copperhead Strike, so I got a new ride or a new coaster um, to get there. And um, I did not record a video the first time I went to Carowinds. So this will be my first video vlog at Carowinds. Anyways, I'll get on the road so you can see my face when it's like actually light outside since it's freaking dark right now. Um, anyways, I am really excited to get back to this park. Their park hours today are from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then they have their Scarowinds, which is their like teenager adult Halloween haunt event from 7 p.m. to midnight. Um, just so you guys are aware because it gets confusing sometimes. Carowinds is haunt. Scarowinds is a separate ticketed event and I will not be attending that because I have to drive four hours back and it's a whole separate ticket um so yeah but I will be going to the normal park hours today um from 10 a.m to 5 p.m so uh let's go all right it's roughly 11 o'clock I just made it I had to stop and get breakfast but I mean it's Chick-fil-a breakfast it's Chick-fil-a breakfast and then I had to get gas I just got slammed with traffic right when we crossed to the North Carolina border. So it ended up taking like an hour longer than I thought it would. Sheesh, Intimidator sounds like a freaking airplane. That's literally what I thought it was. Anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and head in. We are parked pretty far away. I'll show you in a second. It was pretty crowded. Last time I was here, the park was dead and everything was a walk-on. It looks like that is definitely not gonna be the case today. Um, my goal today is to try to get on every single roller coaster here. Um, I already have all the credits, I think, except Copperhead Strike and like a few of the kitty coasters. Um, but I really wanna just, I think I need to reassess my opinions on almost all of them. So I'm going to ride. Pretty much all of them or as many as i can so that's goal number one for today i don't really know if we're gonna have time to do that though there's like 14 coasters here and lots of crowds also if you come to carowinds i recommend going online to carowinds website to like pre-purchase your uh, tickets and such because the ticket price at the gate today i know is 72 dollars as opposed to i paid like 50 and then i also got you also got a discount on parking and stuff as well um, so I definitely would recommend going online and pre-purchasing your tickets and anything else you might want at Carowinds beforehand. And I'm sure it works the same way at other Cedar Fair parks. So at least check and see if you can get a discount online. Um, but the other interesting thing is I, pretty, I like always take a backpack into theme parks. I'm a backpack person. I'm not going to be doing that today because if I remember correctly from last time I was here, Carowinds has loose article bins on the platform for some, but not all of their rides. There are some coasters, uh, especially some of the bigger coasters, that they make you buy lockers for and the locker prices were not cheap from what I remember. Um, so I'm leaving my backpack in here because I do have zipper pockets on my shorts, which means I'll be able to zip up my phone and wallet, stuff I need, into my pockets and not have to worry about it but quick disclaimer if you do not have zipper pockets on your shorts do not take anything in your pockets on rides especially larger roller coasters it doesn't matter how secure you think it is something might fly out and if it does well you lost something and that's dangerous for others because when things fly out of your pockets at that speed they become projectiles and they can very much hurt somebody so just don't do it. If you don't have zipper pockets, you're just going to have to buy a locker or leave it with someone in your party that's not riding. Um, but since I have zipper pockets today, I have that luxury. So I'm just going to leave my backpack in the car and I'll assess the whole situation when I get in there with lockers and loose article bins and everything. If I end up uh, thinking that I want to have my backpack, I can come back and get it. I'm pretty sure they'll do re-entry hand stamps here, um, but hopefully I can survive without it. The one thing I'm concerned about not having is my water bottle but uh hopefully it'll be okay please carolyn's just it's cedar fair in general just every ride loose article bins like it doesn't have to be this confusing here's where we are if you see all the way at fury's turnaround that's where the front gate is they do have a back gate so when the parking lot's full like this you can enter that way 
Uh, that's close to this. We're gonna walk all the way to the front. Thunder Fury, but it hasn't cycled at all yet. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> it's like kind of slow operations today. I would stop and get footage, but I want to get into the park. The security concourse used to be here, so by the time you got into the plaza here, already <laughs> had your uh, security screening done, but they moved that up here. Oh my heavens, I'm stopping at the restroom. So I didn't record more near the front entrance. It, is, it was so freaking crowded up there. Luckily, it seems to be lower crowds near the back of the park here, but I'm starting at Copperhead Strike because that's new credit for me. Um, I'm interested because as of now, Slinky Dog Dash is the only mock rides coaster I've ridden. I haven't ridden one of their larger coasters yet. So I'm very intrigued to see what this ride experience would be like. Entering Blue Ridge Junction, or it's Kill Ridge Junction for Halloween, which is a little bit of a themed area. And Cedar Fair has re realized recently that they should probably actually put a little bit of theming in some of their rides. So it um, seems like every new ride Cedar Fair is, every new major ride Cedar Fair is coming to the park has come with a little revitalization of the area that it's in. Um, so this is Blue Ridge Junction. It's themed to like, Blue Ridge Mountains, I guess. There it goes. They're running on three trains here and stacking like nobody's business. <laughs> See how strong this launch looks. I've heard for uh, Mock Rides launch coasters, the launch is not very forceful, but the elements are really good, so. Oh, it's like some hang time. Sheesh. Welcome to Copperhead Strike. It actually goes kind of under the ride here, the queue. There's a little bit of theming, what a concept. <laughs> it's not much, but it's enough to give it a little bit of atmosphere, which is better than nothing. There's a little area back here you can uh, just come to watch the ride. And up there is the actual entrance to the queue. It's reading about a 15 minute wait on the Carowinds app, so send me back. What the themed queue line is going on here? <laughs> Water park. Get up really close to it. <laughs> Here's what the key line looks like. It just kind of wraps around some of this, I guess, Blue Ridge Mountain-inspired theming elements. Yeah, I've never seen this ride not stack three trains, though, but at least they're running three trains, I guess. And we hit the line. I'd say more 20 or 30 minutes, but we'll see if it's right with 15. Who is better? Why do they have a garage? Here's your station. Yeah. Mock trains. They have a TV screen in the back of the station. Yeah. Interesting. There's a spot here you can see the lounge track, but most of the uh, windows are boarded up for some reason. I see what the mock rides hype is all about now. Um, I will say, at the launches, yeah, they didn't really do anything. But there was, was, the ride was a little bit bumpy, unfortunately. I wasn't expecting that but mostly pretty smooth, lots of air time, lots of hang time. I wasn't expecting to be forceful either, but there were a few moments I grayed out and I almost blacked out right before the second launch. That was the most force that I felt on a um, coaster at all this year, but that also might just be because I'm slightly dehydrated, so I'm gonna get lunch now. I don't have my water bottle with me. Blue Ridge Country Kitchen, that was a new restaurant that came with the kind of revitalization of this area and so it looks like it's open i covered this in a video a while ago which is kind of cool because there aren't very many times i actually get to cover rides and, and new rides coming in videos and stuff i just don't usually have time so it's cool this is a uh, place i talked about and a ride i talked about 
a couple years ago that I'm getting to ride and now eat at. Here's the inside. Looks like you pick up your food here and then pay over there. You have the screen showing the food items available. Got a themed indoor seating here. You can see once you pay at the register, you come over here to get silverware and such. So yeah, it looks looks nice in here. There's usually two sides, only one open today. I assume due to staffing issues. It's kind of sucks because half the dining room is closed, but it looks like they don't really need it. So sweet. But I'm gonna go outside. I see picture tables. This is the outdoor seating area. There's actually a bit of atmosphere as well. And that's why the bar. <laughs> if you're older and you want to, don't know why you would do that at a theme park, but. This is definitely the most expensive food of the trip, or uh, of the year so far. This was $21, but it looks pretty tasty, so hopefully it is. I moved so I would have a, a beautiful boomerang view as I ate. <laughs> it's a bit taller than I remembered it being. You know, this is the only boomerang I've ever ridden. That's the only one I've ever seen with my own eyes. I didn't think it was that bad, but it also has the newer gen. Vacoma trains with the uh, vest restraints. Zoom zoom. Well, that's just, it's going fast today. It's pretty whippy. So my friend Nathan was apparently in freaking Austria of all places yesterday and rode his first boomerang, but it was the, the lap bar boomerang. So he's got an even better, better experience than I did. <laughs> I'll ride that later. World's smallest biscuit. 2021. I don't know why, but something about this gate that's blocking the entrance to the water park is a little wonky. It is nice that during the regular season, Carowinds does have um, water park access included with daily admission. The attached water park, because a lot of other cedar front parks make you pay separately for the water park. Yeah, Blue Ridge Country Kitchen is, uh, it was good. It was on the pricey side, but mac and cheese and biscuit were excellent. I was very surprised with the theme park food. Um, the chicken was a little bit dry and flavorless, but I mean, it wasn't bad. And there was a lot of chicken there. Like, I feel very full. Maybe a little bit sick now, but I made myself eat it all since I paid for it. But I guess in some regard, you're getting what you pay for it, because I feel like that was more food than your traditional amusement park meal, but still very, very expensive. <laughs> I don't know if that's a normal Cedar Fair thing or if that's just here, but um, and then Blue Ridge Junction as a whole, I mean, it's fine. Um, it definitely has more of an atmosphere than most of the other areas of the park. It's just not, I was expecting a lot more from the theming and it, it like, it's not, it's not even anywhere close to like Dollywood level. So, or anything like that. So that was a little disappointing. But again, it's better than we had before. So I'm hoping Cedar Fair continues the trend of kind of adding in some theming into the parks and that the individual so loud <laughs> and that the individual parts will kind of comply with that help out app is reading a 10 minute wait for afterburn considering they're about 15 minutes off when copyright strike we'll see, we'll see how long it actually ends up being no cedar fair fun time tv so sad not all the way up in the hangar you see TVG for Top Gun because in the Paramount days this was themed to Top Gun. Fun fact. And it was about this moment I realized that's Taylor and Sarah from Coaster Studios if any of you have ever watched their channel. Well that's Sarah. Taylor's in the white shirt behind the pink shirt dude who's also one of their friends but you can't really see Taylor. Yeah so uh, Taylor and Sarah from Coaster Studios are out there if any of you know them. So I've now seen them with my own eyes. Let's see if I can find them later. I doubt it. They're pretty far up in line. So it's been 32 minutes. Yeah, sure, for that 10 minutes. Oh, the radio is talking about GCI internships for college students. But yeah, I see Taylor and Sarah on this train. Oh, we're gonna get like right up there, hopefully. As that train comes forward. Why does it stop on the back of the break room like that? Ask the park expert. Remember. I wonder if they're conscious on this film. Maybe they go down the stairs. Pick Taylor with this camera. Maybe I'll see them later. Probably not though. I'm just standing down there, but I probably won't make it. Get shoved in the back room. I'm gonna gray out so hard. All right, I, uh, I did see them. I got to talk to them for a minute. Um, and I had to go get some more um, shots with the camera. Why are speakers so freaking loud? 
Anyways, I'm happy. I got to talk to them for a little bit. It was a little awkward because I didn't know exactly what to say exactly. But I've been wanting to meet them for a long time, so now I have. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll see them again at some point. I'm sure I will at some point in my life, but yeah, that was very, very random. They're just happy to be here. So don't have that much more time today. And yeah, the, the afterburn line was like 45 minutes. So, but that was a much better ride than I remembered it being. And it did not make me gray out as much as Copperhead. I don't know why. But I'm gonna go get some of the kitty credits that I have not gotten last time I was here. All right, kitty hawk. Time to ride a Vacoma pain and bang. This looks like it'll be an absolute pain. Might be going straight to Fury after this kitty credits. This is the worst operation for the day. They haven't dispatched a train the whole time. What the heck? Remain seated in an upright position at all times. Enjoy your flight. This is some padded shoulder Two trains here. Oh my heavens, this is not gonna be worth it. <laughs> All right, next train. Holy crap, the exit queue is longer than the freaking entrance queue. What the heck? See, so yeah, I waited pretty much an hour for that uh, credit, which was interesting. Oh, what the heck? Intimidator is not stacking. What the heck? That's so cool. Yeah, there's a train going up the lift as the other one comes into the brake. Wow, where was that? Oh, yeah, Giddy Hawk. My first time riding one of these older uh, Vacoma suspended family coasters. Um, yeah, after I, after riding Dragonfly, like yeah, Vacoma's come a long way. That thing was just kind of, I just kind of rattled, and you had to try your best not to get a concussion. There was absolutely no fun factor whatsoever. We'll definitely not ride that ever again. Now I am heading into Planet Snoopy because there are two more kitty coasters I haven't ridden. Those being Woodstock Express, which is a decent looking family wooden coaster, and Wilderness Run, which is just a straight up kitty coaster. And for better or for worse, they're both labeled in the Carowinds app as closed for the day. But there are several other rides labeled closed for the day that I've seen running. So I'm gonna go check out the situation. Woodstock Express looks pretty dang open to me. Oh, but this is a, this is a single train. Yeah, this is great. Oh no, it does have two trains. I'd say like 20 or 30 minutes on this. Nothing too terrible. Oh, lift stop. Uh oh. I swear, if we get kicked out of line. <laughs> I was gonna show you, this thing flies into its brake right now. I have no idea why, but I, I, I don't know what they're doing. Yay, it's been restarted. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about. Oh, well, they're rolling trains. That's a first. Oh, I see. Yellow, yellow lift stopped because purple wasn't back in the station by the time it got to the top of the lift. Yeah, so maybe rolling trains on this ride is not a good idea. <laughs> they're cycling empty, so I don't know if that's protocol or something. It was literally just because the train hadn't cleared the brake run yet. I don't even operate a ride. And I can tell you that. <laughs> you know, you can get a one year injection from the breakfast. Alright, that was uh, Woodstock Express. One more kitty credit to get. We'll go see if it's open. Oh, yeah. This looks like no good stuff. Well, never mind on that, because there is a sign outside the entrance that says if you're above five feet tall, you have to be accompanied by a guest that is below five feet tall in order to ride. Um, which is kind of sucks. I wish, I, I like it when parks just let you ride the kitty coaster if you want. 
Um, but there's a chance the operators will let me on anyway. But since it was such a long line, that was probably like a 30 plus minute line. I didn't want to wait that long to then be told I couldn't ride. Um, so hopefully I'll come back to Carolyn's another day when it's not so crowded, hopefully. And then hopefully I'll be able to get a ride on Wilderness Run, the little, little kitty coaster. Because I'm intrigued about those kind of like flat, not tubular track, how, like how those kitty coasters ride. But anyways, not, not worth the risk. Edges in Camp Snoopy, which is probably the best themed area of the park actually, the, the kitty area. Today there's another ride. Mark is closed on the app, it's very clearly open. But I'm gonna go to Fury because I want to get at least one ride on that before I leave. I'm gonna make sure I get that real quick. Ooh, overgrown Ivy Pathway of Destiny. Last time I saw a um, 50s themed diner restaurant in front of a wooden coaster, it was a much better restaurant and a much better coaster. Anyways, time to go ride Fury. 45 minute line in the app, looks long. All right, let's go. I have this in a few minutes. Turned off. You know, I won't say this is not a genius level move. <laughs> promising. It's already been 30 minutes. minutes till park closed. The gates are closed. I guess let's go find a ride with not closed gates. All right, I walked around a bit and unfortunately it does look like all the ride queues are closed for the night. So I'm happy though. I got my ride on Fury, which is the main reason I came here. Um, and yeah, it was, it was awesome. Um, I just don't get the same stomach drop feeling I used to get with drops, which is sad because I loved that. Because I just got used to it. But awesome air time. I forgot how awesome the like, hive dive thing is. I love that. Anyways, I guess I'm heading out because there's nothing else to do here except get food and merchandise, which I don't want to do. I've already spent almost $100 on this park today. Goodbye, Carolyn's. Hopefully I'll be back at some point in my life. It's like three and a half, so let's see. I'm just head in. I'm not going back here. You dive over and under this bridge. So much fun this element when you're coming over here. Yeah, it's a really weird airtime sensation, I'll, I'll say that. It's like they built a plastic drink. I know it's glass, but the edge of the bridge is glass so you can see it dive under. Probably my favorite part of the ride right here. Sweet. Didn't get to ride in later today, and I wish I had. After watching it whoosh by my car, but uh, it's all good. I'll come back another time. Looks like it got repainted recently as well. It's very shiny, much much shinier than Fury, so definitely did get repainted sometime after 2015, but I think I may have gotten repainted this year. I feel like I heard about that somewhere. There it comes. I can't do the shot. <laughs> So, 
Here we go. I'm turning my AC off for a second so you can hear me. I did find my car um, by looking back at the video I took when I got here. I don't know how I would have found it otherwise. Anyhow, had a great day at Carowinds. I definitely underestimated the size of this parking lot. And geez, it is full of cars today. Like I said, very crowded day. Actually, it seemed less crowded in the park than you would think looking at this parking lot. So anyways, it, it was an okay day. I mean, I had fun, but the fact was that we only, or I only got five rides today and two of those were kiddie rides. So only really three real coasters. Um, but Fury is awesome as always. I was actually quite blown away by Copperhead Strike. It was much better than I thought. Afterburn was better than I remembered. Um, so I'm happy with uh, today. It's just, I would feel better if I had a season pass or something. It's just the fact that I, between parking and the ticket and food, I spent probably nine, uh, close to $100 uh, to be here today. And I feel like there's no way I got $100 worth of value. I think the tickets should have been discounted uh, given uh, the shortened hours of today because the, the pretty, the decently short hours combined with mediocre operations and huge crowds meant uh, some pretty long lines for a park of this size. So, but what was awesome, I can't complain too much. Um, I have been wanting to meet Taylor from Coaster Studios because it was just Taylor um, when I started watching him. Uh, probably seven years ago and I have wanted to meet this guy for like seven years now um and of course Sarah's there too Sarah's cool and so it was so awesome after seven years to finally see them and I, that, that wasn't even part of the plan for today I was coming here to enjoy Carowinds I had no idea they were here I was literally I was in line for Afterburn and I heard a girl yell something and I was like <laughs> that girl sounds a lot like Sarah from Coaster Studios that's funny and then I turned around and I was like, oh my gosh, that's Sarah from Coaster Studios. Um, and they happened to be taking footage of Afterburn. So when I got off, I got to talk to them for a little bit. I felt bad because I was obviously hanging them up while they were trying to, uh, to get some footage. But it was just fun to talk to them. And then I left them alone to get their footage because I had to get my uh, kitty credit. And I saw them again. They were on ba back row Fury while I was running in line. So they waited in that stupid line too. And I waved and uh, I think Sarah actually recognized me because uh, she, uh, well, they were just waving at the crowd like they usually do. But I think she made eye contact with me and was like, oh, hey, it's the guy we met earlier. So uh, uh, that was cool that they remembered me. I only got some of the conversation out that I wanted to talk to Taylor and now Sarah too about. So I'm really hoping I'll, I'll run into them again at a park at some point. Considering the odds that I just ran into them here today, I, I feel like I'll probably run into them somewhere else at some point. And maybe even at, at some point, I'll get to, to ride a ride with them. I, I meant to ask them today. I just kind of forgot about it because I was just kind of sh shook by, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm actually seeing these people. Um, but next time I'll, I'll ask if, if I can ride with them. Um, <laughs> that, that'd, be, that'd be fun. But anyways, it's hot and I need to, uh, to drive home. That, 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 that's the thing I gotta do. It's like a, that's like a four hour drive. So was it a good day? I mean, any part, any day to park is a good day, but I, I wouldn't say it was, it was great, but at least there were some redeeming qualities. So it's been about 45 minutes and uh, yeah, we, we've barely, barely moved. We're like probably halfway through this column. This is the worst exiting a, a theme park or amusement park I, I've <laughs> experienced in my life. They're already starting to test rides for uh, Fright Fest. <laughs> or not Fright Fest, that's Six Flags. I've never been to a Halloween haunt event. Um, it's Scarewind here. Oh, look at those dispatches on Intimidator when there aren't actually people on it. It's uh, just how long we've been here. I've, I've been trying to get out of here for literally an hour now. Oh my gosh. So yeah, obviously I was able to successfully make it out eventually. It ended up taking about six hours to get home if you count the time I was in the parking lot, which is just crazy. A crazy way to end an already kind of excruciating day with the heat and the crowds and stuff. But yeah, it, it just kind of left a weird taste in my mouth that whole day. But I'm really hoping to be able to go back to Carowinds at least once, maybe twice this year and hopefully have some better experiences there. So I still think it's a fantastic park. It was just a little crowded and hot and just, you know, operations weren't great. It wasn't a great combination of factors this time. I still got a few more amusement park vlogs from fall of 2021 to upload, so stay tuned for those. And otherwise, you never know what's coming next.